Sunday afternoon and I'm working on something out here in my shop. It's over on my workbench where I normally would be standing for this and it's kind of taking up all the space. But um, no main channel video this morning. Originally it was going to be the tool elevator as I'm calling it um, that I made for my belt disc sander and spent much of yesterday editing the video and then when it came time to do the re record the voiceover I said John are you gonna get any views on this video because I just posted the one on the light stands which I knew wasn't gonna do well but you never know I mean with these things you just simply unless it's a real loser video then you know right unless you're delusional which I'm not yet and sure enough it didn't do well so I don't want to get two stinkers in a row so I'm putting that one off and maybe combine it with something else got a comment on the last video about the stool how it's holding up this is the stool that I chainsawed out of a piece of spalted maple from a tree that I had cut down here several years ago and here it is you can see and um, you know a few months after I made this it cracked because the wood simply wasn't dry enough when I made it and I dished out the bottom to try to minimize that or try to maybe prevent it somewhat but it did crack and then I did fix it I fixed it in a video and um, I did that mainly by by cutting straight across well not cutting straight across but cutting along the crack and then gluing the whole thing back together again and still in good shape uh, now I use this in my office as a footstool I have a recliner in my office actually but I don't recline in it I just sit up more or less straight but I have this here as a footstool that's the original purpose or intent for it a lot of people thought that it was something to stand on although I've done that too actually before I brought it out here I scraped off some <laughs> drops of paint that are well there's still a couple on here um, that fell on it while I was standing on it to paint some you know paint a room so you can stand on it and I'm not a lightweight and it didn't crack that's a you know big concern that people had how strong it was another thing this illustrates is the color that the I use boiled linseed oil on this to begin with and then I used uh, oil based Danish oil okay and that in that video I talked about finishing that's the color you're gonna get okay another piece where is it you can see it real good on this this is a piece of Baltic birch plywood from my bandsaw that I just took apart and look how yellow that is this is uh, oil based polyurethane that I uh, sprayed on and um, for comparison here's the back All right so you can see how yellow that makes the wood and some people like that I'm not uh, I used to okay I used to like that look I thought it looked rich you know, in high dollar, but uh, not anymore. I don't like it. I prefer the look that I get from the water-based stuff. More natural. How can I put it? More subtle, you know, it's more stately maybe. And I had a question on the bandsaw video uh, where I'm taking it apart, uh, asking how I got into making my own tools and uh, that goes way back. That goes back to when I was a kid. Because, um, I don't know, kids today, especially if you're in an area where everything is, you know, readily available and you have some money, kids today are spoiled rotten what they have access to. When I was a kid, if, if you put a, a 3D printer in front of me when I was a kid, I would dive into that, I would never come out, okay? Or a CNC, or half the tools that you can buy for next to nothing today. Okay, it just wasn't, wasn't around when I was a kid, and uh, I didn't have the money for it. 
was the other thing. They say necessity is the mother of invention, but that's not really true. It's not necessity that, that uh, drives invention. It's um, the drive to create that uh, drives invention. Okay, you're gonna fill a need, of course, but creative people cr invent stuff. It's not, you know, an engineering type problem, usually. It's creative people that do that. And they don't stop creating. It's like, okay, why am I out here? Okay, good example is the thing that I'm doing. It's a, actually a CNC project that I'm doing to get better acquainted with using the CNC. I want to incorporate the CNC into the stuff that I do specifically for making difficult to make parts. Okay, or repetitive parts, or parts that need a lot of precision that are just too tedious to make by hand. Where it makes sense, in other words. I want to, so in the process of doing that, I've been doing projects, not, nothing that I'm documenting except for this one, that are a little bit more complex and, you know, it makes me a little bit more familiar. It presents more difficult problems for me to solve. So the thing that I'm doing here is a good example. I could go out and buy it for 20 bucks, right? And I've already spent, I don't know, how many days working on it. Still not done. It's standing there. It's kind of neat. But um, if I wasn't doing that, I would be doing something else. This is the thing that a lot of people that aren't, aren't this way can't understand. Like they'd be sitting, you know, talking or going out for coffee or uh, watching TV or playing video games or watching sports or whatever they do, you know, going fishing, you know, pl playing sports or whatever, whatever they do that, that fills their time. What fills my time and people like me is making stuff, right? This, that's like a primal drive to do that. So I started out young. I don't know if it's, I think, uh, like at this point, when I think back, these are the things that I was always interested in. So I started doing it. And earliest tools are just, you know, stuff that I rigged up with a, with a drill. I made a lathe when I was very young from a drill to try to turn chess pieces of all things. And it kind of worked, you know. And that's where I learned to turn with the regular woodworking chisels instead of real chisels and so on and so forth until you get up to the day. And, you know, as it turns out that that kind of thing is fairly popular and I'm good at it. So I started doing it and here we are. Final thing to talk about is yet in our comment, the guy said that uh, I was talking about tools and using the tools and safety back to safety again. And he said, I can't, quote it verbatim, but he said basically that everybody has uh, an experience where they came close to tragedy just, you know, and realized that after it happened when using tools like a table saw, like you make a cut and something goes sideways and you say, geez, I was so close there. But go through your, <laughs> go through your life, everything you do, you know, like if you drive, I'm sure you've had situations where you just scrape past something and say, wow, <laughs> that could have been bad, you know, or going down the stairs and you, your ankle twists or something like that. Wow, that could have, you know, went wrong. There's all kinds of stuff like that. So you can't say that it's just tools in the workshop that that happens with. It happens with everything. You can either live your life without any risk which is impossible, like I said before. You can get close, though, if you live in your mom's basement and don't do anything, right? Or you can choose to manage the risk that you take. That's what life is about. And using tools is like anything else that you gain experience with when you first started riding a bike, when you're a kid, you might have had something with training wheels on it, right? You're trying to you're trying to get the balance. The wheels are there to help, right? 
And um, after a while, you don't need the training wheels anymore because you're not afraid of tipping over, right? Because you, you know when you get on the bike and you're riding, unless something radical happens, which would be like a one in a million thing, you're staying upright on the bike. Okay, it's the same thing with the tool. This is what I was trying to say before. It's not that I've got no regard for safety or, th or that I'm doing things more risky than other people. It's that I know that in the circumstance that I'm using it, the way that I'm using it, I'm not at increased risk. And then the other thing, you might have noticed how focused this particular one was, because I, I wrote things down. <laughs> I should talk about it without going too far sideways, right? The other thing is, okay, the golden rule. For anybody doing anything, all right, when it comes to safety, is only give advice when you're asked for that advice. If someone asks you, what am I doing wrong here? That opens the door. Okay, walk on in with all your arrogant, expert, know-it-all attitude, point out all the things he's doing wrong, right? Really rain it down on top of him. But keep your mouth shut until he asks. And as your mother was there at your beginning, so I shall be there at your end. And when you die, and die you shall, your transition shall be to the sound of Gladiators, I salute you.